Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover data from a RAID 6 based on a non-operable NAS QNAP TS439U. QNAP NAS is quite a reliable type of storage network system, but unfortunately there is no equipment that is 100% safe from possible issues. Sooner or later, a network-attached storage may fail, and all the data inside it will become inaccessible. In today's video, well, we'll show you the sequence of steps to help you restore access to your data. So what should you do if your NAS QNAP displays a failure, but your available data is locked on that RAID 6? Before you start recovery operations, it's essential to understand that any manipulations involving a RAID system may entail the risk of data loss. That is why the first step is to back up your stuff if possible. There may be all kinds of issues, and very often the NAS just won't turn on or refuses to boot. In such situations, uh, its hard disks tend to remain operable, and it gives us a good opportunity to recover the data. Within a few minutes, we'll see how to retrieve files from a RAID system when a network attached storage breaks down. For better understanding of how the RAID technology works, let's explore the process of creating a disk array system on this specific QNAP NAS. RAID is a technology that allows combining several hard disks into a single logical volume in order to improve performance and fault tolerance. So, if you need to create a RAID, which stands for a disk array, enter the web interface of your QNAP NAS using the corresponding IP address in your browser. When you are there, open Control Panel and go to Storage Manager. In the Volume Management tab, click on the Create button. Hit OK to continue. In the Volume Creation Wizard window, choose the RAID type. In my case, it is RAID 6. And click Next to proceed. Select the drives for this array. And click Create. The system will warn you that all the data on the selected hard disks will be erased. Click OK to confirm it. After that, the array will be built, disks will be formatted, and the disk space will be initialized. This process is quite long. When it's over, you'll be able to create a shared network folder and change other volume settings. So now it's time to create uh, that shared folder. Open File Station. Click on the plus button to create a shared folder. Give it a name and modify permissions if necessary. Here we go, here is your shared folder. Now you can add some data. If the network attached storage doesn't respond to your pressing the on-off button or it shuts down suddenly, something may be wrong with it. In such situation, the first step is to troubleshoot the issue. We'll begin with finding out why this QNAP NAS refuses to turn on. This problem can be caused by hardware issues, power issues, software bugs, etc. For starters, run a visual examination. Check the power connector and the network connector. Make sure that the LED indicators on the front panel are OK. Have a look at the power, disk status and network connection indicators. If the device works but it can't be accessed over the network, check its status by accessing the web panel. Use the web interface by entering the IP address of your NAS in a browser. Try to log in and see if the general information about your device is displayed correctly. Make sure that your network settings are correct and check the network connection. If there are any problems in accessing the network, reconnect the network cable or reconfigure the connection. If the steps I have just described didn't help you to identify and eliminate the problem, you can still retrieve files from a non-operable NAS with a dedicated recovery tool for RAID systems. Download, install and run Hetman RAID Recovery. It will rebuild the damaged RAID with the available hard disks so that you'll be able to retrieve its remaining data. To start the recovery process, take the drives out of the storage device and connect them directly to the motherboard of a Windows computer. 
The most important thing is to connect all disks at the same time. The only exception is when you work with the RAID system that can remain operable when one or more hard disks are missing. In the case of RAID 6, two hard disks can be excluded from the array, provided that the rest of the disks are still operable. If it's impossible to check operability of all disks, just connect all the HDDs that this RAID consisted of. If your motherboard lacks SATA ports to connect all the disks, or you have a similar problem with power connectors, you can solve the problem by using special expansion cards and adapters, and you can see a few examples on the screen. When taking the hard disks out of the NAS, don't forget to mark them with numbers so that you will put them back into your NAS in the same order they used to have. Also, you will need some space to save the data, and it should be of the same capacity as the size of the data you are going to recover. Hetman RAID Recovery supports all popular file systems and RAID types. The operating system may suggest initializing or formatting the hard disks for further use when they are connected to the computer. Never agree to that. If you do, there is a high risk of losing any remaining information, and it can make the recovery process much more complicated either. To have your files back, start disk analysis. Right-click on the volume and choose Open. After that, choose the scan type file scan or full analysis. If the NAS is down, but the program manages to rebuild the RAID correctly, a file scan is enough. When the scan is over, open the folder where the lost files were stored. The previously removed files are marked with the red cross. You can see the contents of every file in the preview window, and this also applies to photos, videos and documents. To open a file in a full screen view, right click on it and choose Full Screen Preview. After that, select all the items you want to recover and click the Recovery button. Choose the directory where you want to save the files, the disk and the folder, and click Recovery again. When this process is complete, you will see all the files in the specified folder. To ensure more safety for working with damaged drives, this program has a feature to scan disk images instead of actual HDDs. This will reduce the disk load on your drives and extend their lifespan. To create a disk image, right-click on the drive and choose Save Disk. Specify the path to save the file. After that, you'll be able to mount this image and scan it. To mount a disk image, open the Tools tab, select Mount Disk, specify the path to the image file, select it, and click Open. If you stored virtual LUN disks on your RAID and you had a configured target ISCSI storage, you should restore its IMG file before retrieving any data from there. This image contains the files that have been written to the virtual network drive. After scanning it with the recovery software, go to the folder iscsi.img and recover files with the name of the required LUN to any directory you find convenient. After that, go to the main window of the Recovery tool and mount the recovered file. Tools Mount Disk Raw Disk Image Select all files, choose the one you need, and click Open. Now scan the mounted disk. Right-click on the disk, Open, Fast Scan. Go to the folder where the files for recovery were stored, choose the items you need, and click Recovery. Select where you want to save them, and click Recovery again. When the recovery process is complete, you will see all the files in the chosen directory. This is how you can recover files which were stored on the ISCSI target, which is no longer accessible over the network. You can learn more about recovering ISCSI target storage on QNAP and restoring its operability by following the link below and checking a dedicated video on our channel.
Summing up, today we have explored the key steps in recovering data from RAID 6 based on QNAP NAS, which broke down suddenly. Remember that the data recovery process may turn out to be long and complicated, and it always requires you to be most attentive, so make sure to follow our recommendations closely. Before you begin, always analyze the situation, find out what exactly caused the system to fail. Recovering data from RAID may call for specialized tools. Always use only well-tried software. Another recommendation is to back up your information on a regular basis. This simple step will help you avoid data loss in case of any failures or malfunctions occur. Remember that successful data recovery depends on a number of factors, and the final result may vary in every specific case. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video helped you to recover your data. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave your comments under the video. Thank you for watching and good luck.